Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangio reporting for The Media Speaks. Make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and check out Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. Um, guys, this is the most important show that I've done all year. I would say the Fukushima stuff's right up there, but that's for a different reason. This is important. How important? Tonight's show is brought to you by Nitro Pack. I'm getting it out of the way now because I'm not stopping once I get going. Go to nitropack.com. Uh, best way to do that is actually to go to the Media Speaks. Click on Nitro hyphen pack. Click on it. You will find the best prep items, the best survival items. And like I've been saying, you're going to find stuff that you will love and enjoy through through all of your camping and uh, outdoor excursions this summer. Delicious food, tents, grills, and then like I said, prep items. Check them out. Guys, we're going to get real today. Trayvon Martin, for those of you that don't know, and I think most people do, They've given this a racial aspect that I'm going to address, and I'm going to be more real about it than anybody else has even come close. So thank you for tuning in. George Zimmerman was a neighborhood watch Hispanic. He was not a white guy. He is not a white guy. He is Hispanic. He... Uh, most of his friends were of African-American descent, and you'll see why I'm going to get into that. It means nothing whatsoever. A black kid who was being followed by the neighborhood watch attacked George Zimmerman. We know this because the trajectory of the bullets can only happen if you are at the angle that you are on your back getting your ass kicked and shooting. Bottom line, if Trayvon Martin hadn't attacked him, Trayvon Martin wouldn't have been shot. Today's lesson, don't attack somebody, don't get shot. Now, I've heard people say that Zimmerman was told to not proceed. Give me the law that says that you are allowed to attack someone following you, and I'll listen. Otherwise, there are other things you could be done. Have I ever been followed and jumped? Yes, I have. I was also followed once because someone thought my ex was Blondie. I'm not kidding. My ex looks that much like Blondie. This person's following me. Am I going to shoot the, the Blondie fall? I'm looking over my back. One of another incidents, I had an African-American gentleman following me when I was walking to the local convenience store. I'm looking over my shoulder. And I come out of the convenience store, and he's there. And he gets out of the car, and I'm, you know, I'm ready to throw. He goes, hey, you, I, did you, did you used to drive cab? Do you know where Maple Avenue is? Yep. My point? It's not legal to attack somebody. If you attack somebody, you're going to get shot. Don't attack somebody. You won't get shot. Solved. Now, I'm on Zimmerman's side. Now, I'm going to address something else. A few months ago, uh, it might have been a year ago now, I lose track of time doing these. A friend of mine at work, who is very much African American, had police officers who were white kill her father. I was to her rescue immediately. I'm not giving her name because she wants to be on the show. If she wanted me to do what I did back then, but she's not able to be on this right now because the case is still pending, so I'm not going to go beyond the fact to say I don't see color. Let me tell you what the problem is. All of you that would want to be rioters. By the way, if you riot near me, you come after me or my family, and I will take I will separate your head from your shoulders for you. So don't come rioting at me. Having said that, we have some common ground here. Even if you disagree with this and you're on Zimmerman's side, I need you to keep listening. This is still the most important show where I, I've done all year and what I've just said isn't even beginning to scratch the surface, so stay with me. The 
problem with this country, and I'm going to go to two stereotypes. When I say whites, I do not mean all whites. When I say blacks, I do not mean all blacks. I am going to speak generically. This is not a politically correct show. The white culture has this thing going on that is creating the ultimate level of stupidity. We have country songs that people like, and I don't mean it's like a novelty thing, like it's something as a joke. I mean, this is what's going into people's heads. Chew tobacco, chew tobacco, chew tobacco, spit. I'm not kidding. That's the brain dead chorus of a song that I play every day where I work. Nothing against the wonderful girl that dances to it, but it's dumb. She's not, but is it? We have the lowest, stupidest rung of the entire white culture, bam, out there in front. Kesha, brain dead, talentless, satanic bimbo. Nickelback wrote the same song 107 times and it sucked every single one of them. Rockin' the Beer Gut is a popular song for white folk. Why? Because the white people have been hit by what I'm going to call the media bomb. And I'll explain it more in a second. Now, you have black culture. Black culture has been taught that it is wonderful to call women derogatory names, the only time you're going to hear the name uh, nigga bitch used against a female, and I will not break FCC rules on this broadcast, I promise. The only time you hear those words is almost entirely in either idiot white skinhead music that no one listens to, it's nowhere, thank God, or most modern hip-hop rap songs. White people do not usually go around calling black women nigga bitches. As a matter of fact, most white people I know think that that's really stupid because most white people that I know are not prejudiced at all, myself included. What you are running into here is you have the government that has made things that should be left between a person and their God alone. Drugs should not be illegal. Drugs should be regulated like they are in most countries that don't have a drug problem on their streets. Prostitution is between God and the people engaging in it. <clears throat> but you make these things cool. Now it's cool to get money this way. And if you are a rapper that writes music that isn't about this, you don't get radio play. And if you don't believe me, listen to Pro Professor Griff. He's black the last time I checked. Ma's death. Immortal technique. You don't get radio play if you're not talking about these topics. You're not black somehow. So you make these things illegal, then you make them appear to be popular. Then you make black people think that that is cool, and you lock them up, and you make money off of locking them up. And now what you have are black and low idiot white slaves to go into the prisons and work for almost no money, and they'll do it just to get out of their cell. Black people, that's who's making you slaves. Those are the people who you need to want to riot against. White people. Maybe if you didn't act like you were stupid, then maybe black people wouldn't think that so many of us are stupid. A gentleman in my club when I got there, and I ain't going to say gentleman, he told one of the girls that work with me that he was... A red neck ghetto rat. His words. What is that? That is the glorification 
of what is called black gang culture and white redneck culture. That is to say, the two forms of East culture that most people absolutely detest. So you want to riot against something? I'm not in favor of rioting before this gets all cut up. And used. And by the way, I will not address any comment from anybody who has not watched the entire video. If you don't watch the whole video, I will not address your comment. Otherwise, say what you want. Attack me at will. Agree with me at will. Don't call me a racist. I'm just going to ignore you. Um, these are the people you might want to think about rioting against. And I don't mean hurting anyone, not real riot. Let me define this. You want to create a mass demonstration? You want to get furious about something? You want to get mad? All right, I'll tell you what. You find me the average African-American gentleman that gets mad at what I'm about to read. I will lock arm in arm with him as a fellow brother at any time. At any time. Our enemies are not Zimmerman, a man who simply defended himself. You don't attack someone, you don't get shot. And for those of you that don't know, go to Florida Sheriff taking riot threats seriously as Zimmerman acquittal appears likely. Like Daniel's Infowars. I'm going to go to four articles right in a row. Blacks, whites, Asians, Hispanics, like Zimmerman was. You want to get mad about something? You want to get mad enough that you feel like rioting? Good! Let's do it! Let's do it here! Let's quit pretending that the, the, the black and whites have some great difference here. I'm going to go ahead and show you the people that make Zimmerman look like Mickey Mouse. You want it? You want it real? I will give it to you real. Bonuses given to Bank of America employees for home foreclosures. That means they took homes off of black people. That means they took homes off of white people. And they gave their underlings extra money for taking those homes. Homes of thousands of people. George, Dem George who? Who? I, George who? You want to get mad? Good, let's get mad together. Homeowners have filed a multi-state class action lawsuit against Bank of America for scamming them into foreclosure. That would be black people, white people, on and on and yeah, it would be all of them that got this. They got the fist treatment equally while you and I were arguing about what color we were. Last week, six former Bank of America employees do not support banks revealed in a sworn statement to a federal court in Massachusetts that they were given financial incentives for deliberately foreclosing on people's homes. That means taking their homes away from them, for those of you in the redneck culture. For those of you that think it's cool to call somebody a nigger bitch, that meant that they took their homes. According to Salon, BLA employees in the mortgage servicing unit, quote, systematically lied to homeowners, fraudulently denied loan modifications, and paid staff bonuses for foreclosing on people's homes. The, and I've done telemarketing before, and I'm going to read it here to prove it. They give you a quota. And if you don't sell enough, yeah, I'm talking about Bob Procyce, the piece of garbage that owns EBSCO Industries, or at least he did. I'm talking about Greg Shannon, the piece of filth that owns uh, Circulation Sales. I'll use names. I said we were being real, didn't I? Um, they come out here and they make you call a certain number of people. Now, if you don't sell so many of them, you're gone. You don't have a job. In this economy, great. Go for it. Yeah, I was married at the time. I did what I had to do. But I know how these places work, and I got out of it the moment that I could. These people that were doing it probably didn't want to do it. They did it because their higher-ups wanted to. So why don't we leave George Zimmerman alone? Why don't we go in front of the local Bank of America, form a chain around them, and uh, let them know how much we hate them in a nonviolent way? Why don't we pull all of our money out of Bank of America? 
Why don't we quit supporting Bank of America? Why? Because you think you're going to start race wars. That's why. Because you don't want to know where the real enemy is. Because then you actually have to learn something. Um, Simeon, Simone Gordon, a former BOA employee, said managers created quotas for lower level employees and a bonus system for reaching those quotas. Employees who placed 10 or more accounts into floor closure who took 10 or more homes in a given month received a $500 bonus, said Gordon. Employees even received gift cards to places like Target, Bed Bath & Beyond for their good work. Yeah, their good work was taking the homes. This article goes on to mention that there was a mound of paperwork you had to have to even qualify for any uh, kind of help. And then when you did qualify, they lied about it, changed the computer records, literally threw papers away to get that bonus money because their bosses wanted to foreclose that house and keep all of the money that Obama, and I'm no Obama fan, we're not going to get into it. All the money that Obama had allotted to these, these banksters, they kept it. Didn't give it to the people who had their homes foreclosed. Lied about the paper filings and gave bonuses to people that foreclosed knowing that it was a lie. Now do you see why I don't give a rat damn about George Zimmerman? You want to get mad? I'll get mad with you. I'll bring, I'd like some black people angry. I'd like some white people right now real angry. I really would. Washington's blog, The Core Problem, Corruption Skyrockets Globally. And I'm going to read them right down the line. Um, voter turnout plunges throughout the Western world largely due to political corruption. There's a link to all of these on this article I just said. Leading indicators of revolt in the Middle East and Northern Africa, corruption, unemployment, and percentage of household money spent on food. Well, let's see. We've got the Western world, white people, corrupt. We've got the Middle East and Northern Africa, Middle Eastern Africans, corrupt. Maybe our leaders are corrupt no matter what color they are. Maybe they want us rioting over George Zimmerman so that you won't listen to me. Corruption threatens to bring down China and Russia. Oh yeah, we all know what white people those Chinese are. They're just so white. No, they're just as corrupt as everybody else. Is the Chinese economy sputtering for the same reasons as the American economy? Corruption. There's more. Failing to prosecute financial fraud, what I just read, which is corruption, on either side of the Atlantic is extending our economic crisis, making it worse for whites and for blacks and for Asians and for Russians and for Middle Easterners. As I just read to you, European and American governments encourage bank manipulation and fraud to cover up insolvency, which is corruption. They ran out of money and then they lied about it. The meaning of the British riots, yep, you guessed it, was corruption. One more, stunning crimes of the big banks, a ton of corruption, and there's many links on that. According to the survey released today by the international anti-corruption watchdog Transparency International, a majority of people across the globe feel that corruption has worsened their countries and that their governments are ineffective at combating it. Did it just say that white people across the globe feel that corruption has worsened? I'm sorry, was it black people across the globe feel that, how about all people know that their leaders are doing this to them and yet we fight over a man who defended himself? According to the survey, more than one in four people reported paying a bribe in the last year. The survey asked respondents to rate the corruption level of their country's institutions on a one to five scale, in which five men extremely corrupt. Political parties were considered to be the most corrupt globally, with an average score of 3.8 out of 5. Uh, in order, political parties, I think there's white and black people in both of those, 3.8. I'm going to go down the line, I'm not going to give you the numbers. Police, last time I checked, there were all races, they're second. Public officials, civil servants, parliament and or legislature, 
judiciary. That's your judges. I've seen black judges. I've seen white judges. Yeah, well, most people know they're corrupt. Business, private sector, medical and health services, educational system, media, military, NGOs, and lastly, religious bodies. So most people do at least somewhat trust their religious uh, leaders so far. What part of that has color in it? What, you want, you want to go to Bank of America with me? I'll, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. You want to go and you want to make some noise about the fact that uh, vote outs, voter, vote, voter turnout is being uh, suppressed because nobody believes in their leaders? I'll go and I'll hand out pamphlets for you. I'll do it with you, black or white. We'll go out and we'll let everybody know what libertarianism is. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what side of the Zimmerman case you're on. Two more stories. For all of you that want to riot, you want to get mad? All right, CNS News. 101 million Americans get food aid from the federal government. The number of Americans receiving subsidized food assistance from the federal government has risen to 101 million, representing roughly a third of the U.S. population. One in three people are getting food from the government because they have sent all of our jobs away while we were fighting about things like race. They let a million people into our country of all nationalities, I'm not racist, who are now doing all of the jobs that you used to have to do back in the day. Like, yeah, I don't want to pick you. You picked fruit or you starved. And we should go back to that. Now, if someone legitimately needs help, that's one thing. One in three. This has happened while we were fighting about race like a bunch of morons. The U.S. Department of Agriculture estimates that a total of 101 million people currently participate in at least one of the 15 food programs offered by the agency at a cost of $114 billion a year. Well, in order for it to be one in three, that means that white people are being screwed by outsourcing. Black people being screwed by outsourcing and all of the other races. So let's keep fighting amongst ourselves. That sounds like a really good idea. Let's use an isolated case of an attack as another reason to divide so that we can maybe get two out of every three Americans on food stamps. That sounds like a great idea. That means the number of Americans receiving food assistance has surpassed the number of private sector workers in the U.S. There are more people getting food stamps than there are people working in the private sector. Last thing I'm going to get to, the decline of breadwinner jobs has resulted in the longest bread lines in American history. You don't see people standing in bread lines anymore like you did in World War II and that. And you think that the, during the Great Depression, I should say, you, you don't see that today. So you think things are much better. There aren't bread lines because we have technology and there are, de there are these uh, uh, food stamp cards. There are more people by far now, by far, and I'm not talking about numbers. Numbers have grown. It's not a fair analysis. Percentages, the actual number of people that are on food assistance now, be they whatever color you want to put on them this week, there's more people on that than there were during the Great Depression. As the number of good jobs continues to decline, the number of Americans that cannot take care of themselves without the government assistance continues to explode. On Friday, we learned that the U.S. economy added 195,000 jobs last month. But when you look deeper at the numbers, another story emerges. Last month, the U.S. economy lost 240,000 full-time jobs that both black people and white people could be working at. Overall, the U.S. economy has only added 130,000 full-time jobs so far in 2013. But it takes 90,000 full-time jobs a month just to keep up with the population growth. Therefore, in seven months, this is being recorded, 7-11-2013, in seven months, we have 130,000 jobs, full-time jobs. But it takes 90,000 a month for the country to progress. 
That means for white people or black people to progress. That means that we're both getting hosed. Hosed. So we are losing quite a bit of ground as far as full-time jobs are concerned. Meanwhile, the U.S. economy has added more than 500,000 part-time jobs so far this year. Unfortunately, there are very few part-time and temp jobs that can be considered breadwinners. Part-timer jobs are great for teenagers, university students, and elderly people that only want to work a limited number of hours, it says. But what most Americans need are, full, are good full-time jobs with benefits, that is uh, health insurance, that allow them to take care of their families. Unfortunately, those jobs are continually becoming a smaller and smaller part of the economy. Okay, so let's pretend I'm a leader. I'm one of these globalist leaders. I'm Obama. I, I'm any of the major congressional leaders that you can think of. I want black people to go to jail. I've taken all of their opportunities away and forced them into part-time jobs. I'm going to go ahead as a record label owner. I'm only going to hire and promote black people that will make it sound like it's cool to sell the drugs that we are making you sell by sending your jobs away. It will be cool for you to have to do that and you won't fight and stick up for yourself. You won't stop us from sending your jobs away. We also need some stupid white people. So what we'll do is we'll only promote white music that applies to the absolute dumbest people that have ever lived. And they will be too stupid. They will get a job at Walmart and they will be happy about it. Nobody has a job and I work at Walmart. I, 50 people apply and I got the job. And you're happy about it. Chew tobacco, chew tobacco, chew tobacco, spit. Because you don't have a thinking part of your brain anymore, and this is how they do it. That's how black people think it's cool in their music to be a thug, and that's how white people think it's cool in their music to be a damn fool. Meanwhile, the country goes to hell. As David Stockton has noted, the U.S. economy has only regained 200,000 of the 5.6 million breadwinner jobs that it lost during the last recession. Listen to this, 47% of adults in the United States have a full-time job at this point, and 53% of all American workers make less than $30,000 a year. They didn't say black Americans, they didn't say white Americans. All Americans. Meanwhile, what color are you that matters? Why we're all getting hosed, why they're drowning all the rats, the rats are arguing over what color they are. We are witnessing a fundamental shift in our economy. Full-time jobs are on the decline. Part-time jobs are on the rise. 10% of the jobs lost during the Great Recession were temp jobs, but 20% of the jobs gained since then, that's only 2008, have been temp jobs for white people and for black people. It says this is not normal. What we are witnessing is a slow motion collapse of the middle class. The number of Americans that are dependent on the government for their daily bread is so large that it's difficult to even comprehend. The following are a few statistics from my recent article, and it's called 21 Facts About Raising Government Dependence in America That Will Blow Your Mind. I'm going to read these, and I'm going to sign off, and let everybody riot and go kill themselves like a bunch of fools. Back in the 1970s, about one out of every 50 Americans was on food stamps. Today, about one in every 6.5 Americans is on food stamps. Last time I checked, those numbers mean there's a lot of white people in it too. And maybe we should also be furious and not at black people. Today, the number of Americans on food stamps exceeds the entire population of the nation of Spain. There are more people on food stamps than there are in the country of Spain. According to one calculation, it says the number of Americans on food stamps now exceeds the combined populations of Alaska, Arkansas, Connecticut, Delaware, District of Columbia, Hawaii, Idaho, Iowa, more, Kansas, Maine, Mississippi, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Mexico, North Dakota, more, Oklahoma, Oregon, Rhode Island, South Dakota, Utah, Vermont, West Virginia, and Wyoming. 
that many people are getting hosed implies that it's not just happening to white people. It's not just happening to black people. 3.3 million children at daycare centers receive snacks because their children can, their parents cannot afford to even feed them while at daycare. All right, guys, that's my show. Now, when the verdict comes in and they, they find that he's innocent and Zimmerman is innocent, um, he, he may be bad judgment, but he, he did not, you cannot attack someone that's following you. If you attack someone that's following you, you're going to get shot, no matter what color you are. If you riot and you attack me, no matter what color you are, you're going to get shot. Please don't. I don't want to hurt anyone. People, look. Give this show to everybody you know. If you don't agree with me on Zimmerman, it's fine. Maybe you're on Trayvon, Trayvon Martin's side. That's fine. I, I'm sorry the guy died. But I'll say this. It is time for us to forget about what color we are. Because if one more generation can just keep on fighting about what color we are amongst each other. Whether you know, we are, you had me in slaves back in the day. Oh yeah, well, <clears throat> you have the leader of the free world and he favors black people. None of that's true. Nobody alive today owned any slaves. Obama does not have the best interest of black people or any other people that are not the global elite and the banksters in his best interest. He don't care what color you are. It is time for us to realize this. It is time to us to put all of this to rest. There are no races, there is one human race. And the global elite, the people that run the world, they want most of us destitute and destroyed. You are listening to the correct views. Sam I. B. De Ganji reporting for the Media Speaks. Very serious show. Please share this with everyone and make sure when you go to the Media Speaks, you click on Nitro Pack and uh, buy something because. That is what funds the media speaks. Good night, friends. God bless. Thanks for tuning in to the most important show I've done all year. And I mean it. Thank you. Good night, everyone.